there are a lot of commanders in Epic Age, and a lot might even be an understatement. There are a crazy amount of commanders in this game, which makes squadron building a somewhat daunting task. I wanted to share with you guys my rules of thumb for building good squadrons in Epic Age. Let's get into it. All right, for anybody absolutely super duper day one, brand new to the game, the first thing that you should know is your squadrons are made up of three heroes, three commanders, whatever you want to call them. So each of your armies that is marching around the map is made up of any three heroes that you want. So how do you pick which three heroes that you want when there are so freaking many of them? The first thing that I think is the most important thing, if you take nothing else away from this video, look at the rating of each troop type for your commanders. There's anywhere from C tier to S tier. S tier means you get a 120% stat buff. C tier means your attributes go down to 70% of what they normally would be. There are also specific troop interactions, cavalry countering infantry, infantry countering archers, archers countering spears, and spears countering cavalry. Everything beats artillery. Artillery is just for sieging. So for when you're marching around the map, just ignore artillery for the most part, in my opinion. The most important thing is you want to pick three commanders that all share at least one troop type that is S tier. So if we look here, Hannibal is S in infantry and in cavalry. So if we wanted him to be the leader of our main squad, we would want to find two other commanders that also have S tier. This is because these bonuses are very important in my opinion. The other thing that you can look at is which region of the game each commander is from. There are four regions, north, south, east, and west. For example, Oda Nobunaga is an eastern faction hero. If you have all three heroes from the same faction and you have the technology researched, you can get up to a 10% stat boost. However, the reason that I said S tier is more important is because S tier is a 20% stat boost. So if you were to pick, let's say, three Eastern heroes that were all A and with archers, you would have 110% of your normal stats, 10% coming from three Eastern faction heroes giving you that buff. However, if you were to pick any other three heroes that were S tier in archers, they would all have 120% stats because of S tier. So the tier that your commander is with a troop type is the most important. However, if by some miracle you can find three commanders from the same region that also share an S tier of a troop type, you could get up to 130% stats on each of those commanders. And just as a little bit of quick math, if you have an SSA and they're all from the same area, that'd be 130, 130, and 110. That's actually very slightly more than three SSS heroes because that'd just be 120 three times across the board. So number one, pay attention to troop type tier rankings. Number two, if you can have them be from the same faction, that isn't all that important though and finally there is a thing called bonds hero bonds so for example with genghis khan if he has any three heroes of the same squadron from genghis khan subatai jebi borochu and mukali i probably butchered those names they will gain an additional special buff generally speaking from what i've seen so far these buffs are not like ridiculously impactful if you can make it happen while maintaining those S tier troop type relationships, then getting these is just icing on the cake. I don't think that any of these that I've seen yet are worth completely ignoring the troop type bonuses just to pick up these buffs. However, they do exist and it is something that you can pay attention to. Like this one's super easy to pick up, Attila the Hun and Kangas Khan. And the chief is going to get combo state, which means they attack twice in the first turn. So it's a little nice buff, but nothing to write home about, so to speak. And finally, I want to go ahead and talk about what makes a good chief. 
because if we go to assign squad here, you have a chief and you have two lieutenants in each of your marches. And this actually is important because if your chief dies, the rest of your army surrenders and retreats. No matter, like Richard and Belly could have full troops if Joan just loses all of her troops in the first round of combat by some crazy fluke. Since she's the chief of my army, these guys would say, all right, whatever, I'm done, I'm going home. So it is important that you pick the correct chief for your armies as well. So what I look for when I am picking who I want to be the chief of my army is two things. Number one, I want them to have a reasonably high defense with pretty good defense growth. And I want them to have pretty high intelligence with intelligence growth. And this is because intelligence acts as defense towards tactical damage. Tactical damage is kind of like elemental damage in other games, magic damage in other games. It's just a different type of damage. There's physical damage, which is reduced by your defense stat. And then there's, and it's increased by your attack stat. And then there's intelligence, which does increasing tactical damage and reduces the amount of damage that you take from tactical damage. So I think these two things are very important for your chief because you really don't want your chief to run out of troops because then you immediately lose. I've seen a lot of people so far picking heroes that have low defense and or low intelligence. And in my opinion, that's a little bit of a misplay. I don't want to be like too rude to people about it because everybody's learning this game still, right? But I do think it's important that your chief be pretty tanky. And what I've done, for example, with my Joan of Arc, she has not that great of defense growth, but she does have pretty respectable intelligence growth. And so what I've done to shore up her defense is I've dropped all of my extra attribute points into her defense. And the reason that I picked her instead of Richard or Belly is because while Richard has really high attack and defense, he does not have very high intelligence. He's only getting 0.73 per level. Joan was getting 1.88. And if we look at Belly over here as well, he only gets 0.76. So while he does have a lot of attack and defense, and he's technically going to be a little bit more tanky than Joan purely against physical damage, he's going to be taking way more tactical damage than Joan takes. And so that's the other thing you can kind of do if you want to use a person as a commander who is like really good in either defense or intelligence, you could choose to drop all of your attribute points into the one that you need to buff up in order to be more well-rounded. That way your chief doesn't get sniped and then you immediately lose the fight. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.